We're going to be featuring Lobster from Newfoundland on September 23rd at 6.30. It's a Zoom free masterclass just for you. claws and in a pound and a half lobster uh, it's not unusual to see a closing strength of 100 pounds per square inch so you know that's why it hurts if you get nailed by one of these um, well before we the next thing I want to talk about is um, what lobsters eat by the way lobsters are not scavengers they're not scavengers they want fresh food it may not smell good to us uh, but if the food actually is rotten, they will, uh, they will not eat it. Like the bait that doesn't smell so good um, will, will not attract lobsters if it, it actually is, is uh, rotten. Now, these small antennae are the chemosensory antennae that help the lobster find its food. And it's a combination of their sense of smell and the sense of taste all in one. And you, if you watch these uh, things in the, in the water, uh, they're, they're continually flicking, looking for uh, what's in the environment. Now, we also have these large antennae, and uh, they tell the lobster its sort of sense of, of position, and it also, they also use them, uh, if they're looking for uh, a place to hide, they'll flick these into a hole and determine that the, uh, the hole is the right size and, uh, and they'll fit. Uh, another thing I want to show you while we're at it is uh, these are the gills of the lobster. It's the respiratory tissue of the lobster. Uh, takes in oxygen, puts out CO2, and, and also has some kidney-like functions uh, as well. And uh, then we have the digestive gland, which is the tamale. And uh, the tamale, I've got some eggs mixed in with it. Uh, it, it looks sort of amorphous, but it really isn't. It's sort of like your intestine. It has the functions of intestine, uh, pancreas, uh, all in one, and liver. Um, if you look hard at this, you, you can see that it's, uh, it's got sort of a, a furry-like structure, uh, and these things are called tubules. And if you remember uh, from your high school biology, if you were paying attention, uh, that um, you have a villi in your intestine that, that absorb your food. Well, these are like your villi, except that they're turned inside out. The absorptive surface is on the inside. They're, they're hollow. So the ingester goes in the tubule and then gets squeezed back out, uh, whatever isn't uh, digested. <laughs> Uh, another thing I want to just show you quickly is the, uh, the stomach of the lobster, which is right here, here are the eyes. It's a compound eye, just like a, an insect. And here's the stomach. So I'm going to cut into the stomach. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to take the stomach right. Uh, maybe I won't take it out. Uh, Bob, I'm going to cut you, into the could stomach. Could you a little bit move the camera just a little farther back? It's getting a little choppy. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. okay, so we're going inside the stomach, and what I want to show you is what's called the gastric mill. The teeth of the lobster are in its stomach, and um, I'm going to take. Actually, I think I will take it out. I, I do this talk quite frequently for uh, the local schools, including the island schools that are one-room schools, and uh, this this is one of the favorite for the kids. Okay, there are three teeth in the stomach. And they're just like your molars. They're very hard. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. And when I do this in, in the schools, there's always some kid that want, puts it in his pocket and takes it home to mother. So it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's quite an attraction. So what the lobster does is uh, the, the food that's in its stomach, uh, they'll, they grind it up, and then it goes into the digestive gland, the tamale, and then there is an intestine that's not all that function. And as it happens, uh, this lobster still, we, we got a heartbeat. Here's the heart. Uh, let's see if I can, I just noticed it was beating still. Yeah, maybe not. 
got a video of that. But we won't, yeah, we got a little bit of a heartbeat. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, the uh, blood of the uh, lobster um, later on. And, and uh, the other thing I want to show you is uh, on these, uh, on this cooked lobster, you can see it better than the one that's not cooked. You see this, this black, uh, this is melanin. And it's melanin just like the melanin that we have when, when, we, uh, when we get a suntan. And just for perspective, here's the stomach and here are the gills in the, uh, in the cooked lobster. So I, I think we've got the, the basic covered. So uh, Michael Ann, you wanna, you wanna carry on? And I will, but did you, did you want to talk about lobsters mating at this time or save it for later? I, I think we, we, I think we got enough of that covered, you know, the, the okay. uh, missionary position and all that sort of stuff. I, <laughs> I think we got it. I think we got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My, my mistake then. All right, guys. Um, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to a few people, Simon Jarding, who's uh, with Newfoundland Lobsters uh, in Royal Greenland. And also Stuart Lamont, if you're still there, Jeff Irvine from the Lobster Council of Canada. Yep. So what I'm gonna cover right now is you bought the lobster and one of the things to look, about, look for in lobster uh, is exactly what Bob has been showing you, a live active lobster. You wanna make sure that the lobster is very, very alive and well and kicking, if you will. And then you buy the lobster, uh, how do you store it? So uh, along with my box that I got, um, from Newfoundland Lobsters, they had this beautiful cloth in there, which I also used to cover over the lobster. They're live lobster, let it be known. I mean, a lot of people, people on this call know that uh, you do not immerse live lobster in water. Uh, <laughs> it's a faux pas. Uh, but you can cover them with a damp cloth in your refrigerator on a tray, as you saw when we started, and you just Put, the, put this over top of the lobster and keep them nice and happy. And I'm a firm believer of keeping the animal nice and comfortable, very relaxed. I think the end, I think you, the product will be much better if you take care of them all the way to the plate. So now you've got them, you've stored them, you can store them up to probably 36 hours in the fridge. It's okay, but Obviously, you buy fresh lobster. You want to get to them. You want to cook them. Better, better to just cook them up right, right away and then store them in your fridge and always give them an ice bath. So we're going to get on to that. This little fella right here. So this one and a quarter pound lobster, which is what Newfoundland is selling. They sell it one size, one price. Very simple. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Why not? Um, so this, this, this little guy took about five to seven minutes after the water came back to a reboil. Now, I am steps away from the ocean, and Paul, you can attest to this, everyone knows this. If you can just, just go out and get the seawater and boil your lobster in the seawater, that's the best way to do it. So that's what I did. I Absolutely. boiled these today, and um, after the water, you get the water rolling boil. I put a little bit of bay leaves in the water. Now the water is salty enough. I don't need any kosher salt in there at all. Uh, some people put lemon, some people put pickling, uh, you know, package. I just do the bay leaves and, and then I immerse them into the water once it comes to a boil. And then once it comes back to a reboil, that's when you start counting the clock. And really, I just keep an eye on them. I mean, there's, I've seen different numbers on the, on the time, but um, you know they're done when the tail flips back really fast. And you can indeed take the antenna, just twist the antenna off really quickly, and it comes out. Well, after you cook them for that long, I take them out and I put them on an ice bath right away. And I turn them upside down. We are kind of firm believers in Canada that, uh, you know, it keeps, the, it keeps the juice in. And hey, I believe it. But stop the cooking immediately. It's like a steak. You take it off a little bit ahead of time because it's still cooking, right? And this is like meaty protein here. So here we go. We're going to pull off the claw. We're going to pull off the other claw. And I think Bob explained the crusher and the pincer claw. Okay. And I like to just do a twist and pull. All right. And these little guys are so great to work with, even if they're hard shell or firm shell lobsters, they're easy to squeeze, get into. Uh, and then Stick your finger in here and just pull that tail out. Let's see if that works for me. Whoops. 
yeah, there we go. And I can tell that the tail is tender. And to me, that is a sign that you cook the lobster right, and you will get it right every time if you put the lobster on that ice bath and stop the cooking, okay? That's what I believe. And also the salt water helps the ocean water. It's bad, so I can tell that this is gonna be a tender tail, okay? Or it is a tender tail. Uh, and then I just don't fight with it, okay? Just pull this off. And what we do is we always want, you either hold this up to your mouth. This is something we do in the Maritimes as well. As we pull the claw apart, we hold it up to our mouth and there's a beautiful, beautiful cocktail of lobster juice waiting for you to, to, to eat, to swallow. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, the flavor, the Newfoundland flavor is coming through right now. I just got a big call of that. So otherwise, hold it over a bowl, let that juice, always save that juice, always, always, always save that juice. And then I give it a little whack like this, one, whoops. Sometimes it works, really hard shells. <laughs> and then I, I usually go like this, a little twist, make a cap, and there you have it. Beautiful, beautiful lobster meat poking out of there. And I always use my pincer claw to pull it out. So, I mean, you, you kind of don't even need tools like scissors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I use that to pull that out of there, this little pincer claw, okay? Pull the meat out of the claw. Then we get on to, let's see, I'm gonna do this again. You see all the juice? I don't know if you just, if you notice that or not. The juice that's coming out of that claw, it's amazing. So I save all that and I reserve it uh, to make stock, to make a uh, soup de poisson, wow. See, crack, I hit it once, then I go boom, boom. Now, you might have a different way of doing it, and there you have it. Here's the lobster meat in there. Can you see that beautiful lobster meat? All right, so now what you do is you pull this body out, okay? I pull it out, look at this, the tamale that's in there right now. I would absolutely take a spoon and go in there and scoop that out, scoop, that tamale out, put it in a little bowl. Now, if this was a female, I would be pulling out, and I did have a female earlier, so I just wanted to show you. Here's the female. She's got the cooked roe that Bob showed you. That is the cooked roe, all right? So now you wanna pull that out, and guess what you have right there? Oh my gosh, you have the makings. You could make a paste, a pate is what they call it in New Brunswick, and just, Totally, this is a small bowl. I should have it in a bigger one. But I'm going to grind this together and I'm going to save it. I would freeze it. If you're not going to use it right away, cover it over and freeze it and put it for late, use it for later for all kinds of different recipes, okay? So, Michael, and what else do you have in that bowl there? It looks like a liquid in the bowl that you put the row in. This one? Mm -hmm. Yes, so this was my saved juice from the last lobster. I mean, look how much, look how much juice is there from the last lobster. I mean, these Newfoundland lobsters are giving me a lot of love, uh, if you will. And uh, just beautiful. I'm, that is just golden, golden, golden sauce right there, okay? Let's talk about the new shell, uh, soft shell, new shell, and hard shell, the difference between the two. And I think it's a really important. And there, there lies some of the differences between Canada and Maine lobster. Canada has zones and seasons, uh, and therefore that predicts a hard shell, full meat at lobster every time. Maine is really concentrated on their new shell, little lobsters that have just molted, and they really do a great marketing job on just getting out those new shell lobsters. There's pros and cons to having the new shell and the hard shell, the new shell, great you can rip it apart and it's they say it's sweeter of course you know coming from the maritimes i think our lobster is sweeter but it's really it's all just wonderful lobster um you could just pull those new shells apart if you're in a restaurant and i want to talk about behind the scene staff working to shuck the lobster that would be easier less time on pulling the lobster meat out however on the full meat at lobster, obviously the yield is going to be higher. They're going to get much more product uh, for the lobster you're going to buy. 
And sometimes you have to be careful if you're a consumer and you're buying a new shell lobster, that sometimes you're paying for the water weight because the new shell, the lobster is still trying to grow into its shell and there's water in there as well as the meat. It's trying to, to fill up its shell. It hasn't filled up yet. So a lot of times, you know, when you get into a, a shell and you open it up and you go, oh, there's only, only half of the shell is full of meat. Well, that's a new shell lobster and that's predominantly what, what Maine sells. And another reason it's so important for Canada and the US to trade back and forth is they both need each other's lobster. <laughs> Maine needs the hard shell lobster and Canada needs Maine's new shell lobster. So I'm gonna let Bob explain yeah. that a little bit more because he does it very eloquently and I could go into it, but I'll, I'll save it for him because it's, it's just fascinating and it's a wonderful exchange between lobster fisheries. Okay, so now I've shocked a little bit. So I wanted to show you, you just take this carapace here and you literally twist the body and inside of the body, please don't let it go. Please, please, please indulge in the knuckles. They have, there's so much meat inside of the knuckles. It's just fabulous. And of course, if you're gonna eat lobster like this, you're gonna roll up your sleeves, you're gonna get into it, it's gonna be fabulous. That's the way to do it if you're gonna if you're gonna do it this way, okay? Um, the other thing is is these little legs, the legs, um, and, and and this is a little trick for some of you who may not have seen it before. Um, I've got my wine bottle here, and I don't know, yes, uh, my table's gonna bust, but I see there might be a little bit of lobster meat that comes out of there. Oh yeah, let me just tell you, there. There is now a new method of doing this, and it's called an HPP product. Ashley will bring those pictures up of the added value product that is now available to restaurants. It's a fabulous product. And the reason I bring that up is because they, there, there are processing plants that I've gone to and watched them literally stand there and squeeze out the meat of one of these legs. It's it's just amazing, okay? So that's a lot of labor. And now they have these HPP machines that just blows the meat out of the lobster. Um, that's another way to go if you're a restaurateur. You can absolutely use that instead of uh, getting into the laborate labors of, is that Stuart Lamont? Uh, uh, the labors of shucking the lobster. I, I would chop this up right here. Uh, this meat is just, look at how, look at how soft, look how beautiful and just an idea for you guys. What I did earlier as Bob was talking, I filled up just a little idea, a little recipe idea. I filled these cones up with, hi Tom. I filled these cones up with, he's trying to reach that, uh, lobster. How fun is this for the kids? So we really just want to give you some real simple ideas. We're not going to flambe lobster tonight at all. Um, I'm all about giving easy, simple, approachable recipes. And this is absolutely really fun. You can order the cones. And then just the recipe is really just what you're going to put in a lobster roll. Just put it in the cones. So put that aside. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people got on this kick about loving avocado toast. Well, if you wanted to take your avocado toast up a notch, well, you could certainly uh, add some protein to that and get, oh my goodness, look at this. Isn't this delightful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Paul, I want you now to take it away and share some of that Newfoundland lobster love with us, uh, a couple of your own recipes. Absolutely, thanks very much, Michael Ann. So uh, yeah, we, uh, I've got my lobster meat already cut because uh, we've already been shown how to do that. So uh, first we're actually gonna show you a little uh, recipe we do down the food truck. And as uh, Michael Ann said, the food, our food truck is uh, Kitty Vitty Fish and Chips. We do all fresh seafood from here in, uh, in Newfoundland, locally, uh, as close as we can get it. And uh, this year we had a lobster uh, taco on the menu because now tacos, uh, you know, people love tacos. Summertime is nice and warm. So it's a perfect, perfect little treat there. And I spent a little time in Argentina. So it's kind of like a mix between we got the Newfoundland lobster, we got the Argentine uh, taco recipe. So I'll uh, heat up my lobster meat. And I keep it pretty, pretty big because, you know, it is a taco. You don't want it too, too thin. And uh, I'll warm it in a pan with some lime juice, some olive oil. And once we get the lobster nice and warm, um, 
I make up a pico de gallo. So right now is perfect time for this because we got tomatoes growing in the garden as well as onions are ready to come out of the ground. So just finally chop the tomatoes and the uh, onions. I add a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of sugar that brings the juices out of those vegetables. And it makes a nice sauce. It'll flash the on top as well for the for the herb portion of it. And uh, we've already got the shells warmed up. And so with our shell, another thing that's ripe right now in uh, Newfoundland is cabbage. So little cabbage slaw. Uh, add a little lime juice, little little tiny pinch of salt, not too much. Again, breaks down breaks it down. Let some of its natural oils, natural uh, flavors out of it. So we'll start with the uh, a warmed corn tortilla. I like the corn. You can go with the flour, up to you. One basic thing is that you need to you need to warm the fat that's in the tortilla so it's not too crispy because if it's too crispy, you're going to crack. Everything's coming out of the bottom. Then you just got a hand taco rather than a uh, lobster yeah. taco. So we start with the um, with our, our lobster slaw there, or sorry, our cabbage slaw. And we've got warm lobster meat. And you don't want to be too, uh, too skimpy with the lobster meat because it's it's more about the lobster than anything else. So I'll fill the taco there with, with a nice amount of lobster. <laughs> then we top with the uh, pico de gallo, nice and fresh for the summer, like that. And uh, this is a favorite in our house for sure. It's the uh, spicy mayo. So spicy mayo, really just hot sauce, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of mayonnaise, and uh, you can make your own. Or you can buy it in the store a lot of the time these days. Top with some fresh cilantro. If you like it spicy, slice a jalapeno. And that there is the uh, our lobster taco. I'm not sure how well you can see that. But anyway, perfect thing for the summer, or, which is our lobster season. So nice and light. And, uh, you can add some avocado to it as well. Makes it, uh, makes it extra tasty. Um, very popular uh, this summer for sure down in, uh, down in our food truck because Again, hot in the summer. We usually do fish and chips. Sometimes it gets a little too hot for some deep fried food and a lobster taco is a perfect little, uh, perfect little lunchtime snack or even in the evening if you're drinking a, maybe a cold beer. Uh, again, a little finer chop this time. This is more of a lobster salad that we do, an hors d'oeuvre, perfect for when we have weddings or something like that. Now, during COVID, it's not so common to, uh, to have an hors d'oeuvre, but again, now you can make it and you can pass it around individually, which is nice as well. So. It works for every every sort of occasion. So lobster, chop it up nice and fine in the bowl. Uh, I made up my own mayonnaise, but you know, mayonnaise in the store, whatever you need. That's about a cup of chopped lobster. I'm gonna put in a, a heaping tablespoon of mayonnaise. I love the I love the taste of a lemon, so I'll go, I'll go pretty heavy on the lemon. And so you know. A big lemon, maybe a third of it. Squeeze the juice into the bowl. Chopped herbs. Me personally, I like dill, chives, parsley. I got some people in my family who don't like dill so much, but this one's for me, so I'm going to put the dill into it. Nice amount of fresh herbs in the bowl like that. This is just a touch. Touch of Parmesan cheese, just to give it some body, some nice, rich flavor. You don't want to put too much though, because at the end of the day, you're, you're trying to enjoy the lobster. A uh, pinch of salt. I always use kosher, easier to sprinkle. And he cracks cracked pepper. Now this one, I like to put a little hot sauce, whichever hot sauce you like. I'm a chew little guy, but you know, some people are Franks. That's an argument I'm not going to get into, that's for sure. Mix it up. So essentially right now you have a little lobster salad. If you like um, if you like celery, if you like cucumber, you can finely chop that as well and add it to it. And uh, these are little potato chips. I mean, you can use potato chips. You can find anywhere at all. Uh, I happen to have, again, potatoes coming out of the ground. So I'll get more potatoes than I know what to do with. So I'll use my own potatoes for the chip. Just lightly fry them. You can also bake them, slice them, thin it up, drizzle with a little uh, olive oil or canola oil, a little salt on top. And uh, that's pretty well. Like we said, we're going to keep it simple. So a little bit of that lobster salad on the chip. Yay. Fresh herbs. 
perfect time of year to be making stuff like this. And then if you want to hit it with a little tiny Parmesan cheese on top, again, nice little, nice little hors d'oeuvre. Perfect for whatever you want. People coming over in the afternoon or you can sit down and eat 10 of them yourself. There's, there's uh, no restrictions. <laughs> So again, we're, uh, we love our Newfoundland lobster here. We find it's, it's, it comes from cold water. Uh, our season's a little bit earlier. I'm not sure how well you can see my map here. This is an old map of Newfoundland. It used to be in my grandmother's kitchen, so now it's in mine. Uh, there's a couple of pictures of lobsters here in different areas that are fairly well known for our lobster. Um, again, you know, our season starts up around here in Newfoundland and, and works, away, works its way down around the island where the waters are getting a little warmer. And uh, we find that, you know, hard shell lobster, it's nice and sweet here in Newfoundland, cold water. Uh, again, very biased because I love Newfoundland. I'm a Newfoundland uh, seafood advocate myself. So I, I'm a, I've always said colder the water, the taste of the seafood. So <laughs> again, oh, not I, an argument I want to have, <laughs> but I, agree I stand with by you. that. Absolutely. And uh, you were saying again as well, when you cook the lobster, the ice bath, I 100% agree. Uh, but the, my reasoning is a little, little tiny bit different is when you're he heating a lobster, the shell is almost acting like a pan, like a, like the cooking. I don't know. Not unlike your pan, the shell is hotter than the rest. So when the lobster is fully cooked, the, the meat is sticking to the, to the shell. There's a little tiny layer of fat in between, but if you allow that to warm, to, uh, to cool down slowly, it'll sort of solidify and keep the lobster meat tight to the shell. When you shock it in cold water, the shell, colds, uh, the shell cools down fast. It cools down very quickly. That releases that fat from the shell so that when you're opening your lobster, when you're breaking it apart, it becomes much easier because now the lobster meat has separated from the shell, which is exactly why I agree. You, you, again, as well, seawater. I'm not as close as you, I don't think, Michael Ann, but I'm not too far away, maybe a 15 minute drive. I go to the other side of the peninsula uh, to get my seawater, but uh, yeah, boil it in seawater exact same times you were speaking about and then always that ice bath just to solidify that that little layer of fat and some of the meat and then pulls yeah. it off the shell so when you're opening it up it falls away freely and you get to take everything with you because the shell then cools and lets everything off of it so that way you're not nothing stuck to the shell on the inside because it's a sin to do it yeah thank you thank you for reminding me of that uh, the, re the other reason to do that paul that's great um what did you so when did you say your lobster season predominantly is in newfoundland again we're much we're much earlier in the summer and i mean realistically it's the spring for us so i mean we're uh, we're starting up there uh you know really heavy in may and uh we're we're done by mid-summer uh so it's a different season altogether uh you know with a little bit of overlap but where we're hard shell and uh as well, in Newfoundland, we have another thing to deal with, which is water. It's, uh, our water is a little rough. We're off the coast. So it's, it's yeah. just very convenient that that's a time that you, uh, you're not too worried about taking your boat out. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it is a, it's an earlier season. So for us here, I know personally with my family, when June hits, that's when we're really, we're really starting to get super excited about lobster. But, I mean, it's much earlier than that that they start coming ashore. Right. Uh, but, but you... I, you but the lobster is available now, right? You could order the lobster from Canada yeah. or, or U.S. Uh, you could order yeah. that lobster uh, for now because you're holding it uh, in, in absolutely a lobster. Yes, so they live in. The, we hold it in, in uh, filtered seawater in the facility there in a, a very large live tank, and uh, they're kept. Our lobsters are kept uh, separated because you don't want anything piled on top of each other. It's you know you let them have their space and. They're quite happy in their, you know, filtered, same, the same cold water they're used to. Um, yeah. And yeah, so like you said, when the lobster, when you get order lobster from Newland Lobster of Tom, you're getting a lobster that's coming out of cold, filtered seawater. Yeah, they're not, right. uh, they're still where they like to be. I was very impressed to get my box today because those lobsters yeah. were, I mean, seriously, you sent them out yesterday morning and they were to my door this morning. Wow. Oh, yeah. And they were kicking alive and well, which is what we want, and uh, beautifully packaged. I love the combs, uh, the little dividers that you put them in. As we know, it, lobsters can can uh, eat each other. <laughs> they oh don't yeah, like you want to keep want to keep them separated. <laughs> yeah, but it, I sent some actually to my friend who's a chef in uh, Vancouver. He couldn't believe it as well. They were just 
he opened up the box. They were, he picked them up. They were very lively crawling around and he's a Newfoundlander. That's so uh, we're childhood friends and we got into the same industry on the other sides of the country. So he was so happy to see him because like you said, he hasn't seen the Newfoundland lobster and definitely not in Vancouver before. So. Well, like wonderful. Stuart Lamont has said to me this week, he said it's really under, um, and I don't know if it was underappreciated, but just unrecognized lobster. We don't talk so much about Newfoundland lobsters as much as we do probably, you know, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. But hey, of course, Newfoundland has some lobster. Has lobster. Uh, it's just a different season, and and we should know about the that it's available and that you can now as a consumer buy the product so it's i'm very excited absolutely you go to newfoundlandlobsters.com and you can order them right off the site ship straight to your door so what more do you want the next day yeah. you, know, you feel like lobster on a wednesday and then on a thursday evening you're eating newfoundland lobster that was in the water you know hours before so we can't can't beat that thank you so much paul i think we're going to go over now to bob and ashley yeah. and he's going to finish his uh and demonstration and bob's going to tell us why hang tight yeah. He's going to tell us why he believes that lobster blood, hemocyanin, could potentially be a COVID-19 treatment. Go ahead, Bob. Well, we'll, we'll get on to that, but, but a couple of things that, that I, I, I want to talk about it. As I've traveled ar around this world, one of the things I've noticed is any place that has a lobster, uh, those folks thinks, think that their lobster is the best lobster in the whole world. doesn't matter where you go. And... Uh, so it, it, it's interesting to see that, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, uh, Canada, or, or US, um, the local lobster is the best. And um, I, I also want to mention that uh, the, the, the Canada-US relationship is pretty important because most of Maine lobster fishery takes place in the summer and early fall. And as it happens, we have no seasons, but there isn't a lot of fishing that takes place in the winter. And uh, the major lobster fisheries in Canada open um, for the most part around November. And it's a time when there isn't a lot of uh, fishing in Maine. There's some, but not a lot. So um, the lobster markets are pretty well supplied by Canada uh, from November through the spring. Newfoundland, particularly when they open up uh, in, in the spring, uh, Maine lobster really hasn't started. Uh, so they're supplying a good part of the uh, uh, market uh, along with lobster from the Magdalen Islands in, in Canada. So that's, uh, it, the relationship is important. We're really not competitors, although we talk about that flavor and stuff like that. If we ever did blind tastings, we yeah. might- Bob, can I, can I pause for a question, Bob, that we had on the chat? Um, sure. So Linda had asked if you could talk about how the taste of where a lobster comes from differs. So how does Newfoundland differ from Maine, for example? In terms of? Flavor, taste. I, I, I think there's really none. <laughs> it's, it's the same critter. It's the same lobster. And, um, what That's a great answer, Bob. Lobster somewhat is uh, what, what they're eating. Uh, water temperature may be a part of it. But if you do a blind tasting, you're often surprised uh, as to what you think you like, you may not like as, mu as much as you think you do. So um, lobster is lobster. Accepted, Rob. say, say again. Uh, Sorry, I said challenge accepted. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, you that'll be the next one. Results. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's one of the reasons why, why we, we, we haven't done it. Uh, but we have done some uh, experiments uh, related to what lobsters are eating. And uh, some years ago, we, we got some funding from the Indiana Soybean Board to develop lobster baits. And um, as part of this, we wanted to know whether uh, a soybean-based bait would affect the flavor of the lobster and in a blind tasting, uh, how would this come out? And as it turns out, uh, our blind tasters like the flavor of the soybean fed lobsters better than those that had eaten herring, which is the uh, conventional uh, lobster bait. So it, 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 it's, it's often surprising uh, what, what happens in these blind tastings. 
Bob, I can, can you, give you some other examples. As well. Bob, could you quickly review before we forget too, um, is that we want to talk about the sustainability. Just give three or four pointers, yeah. uh, real quick pointers on why our yeah. lobster fisheries yeah. are so sustainable. Well, uh, both uh, US and Canada have absolutely sustainable fisheries based on protection of the breeding populations. Uh, in Maine, for example, there's a minimum size, and that minimum size is a size a lobster that's going to breed at least once. And the, the other thing that we do in Maine that's, that's unique is a lobster that has had eggs is marked with a notch on its tail. And as long as that notch is present, that lobster cannot be landed. So you're not gonna see a notched lobster uh, at any place that's selling lobsters. We also have a maximum size and this maximum size is a, about, a, um, a, about a five pound lobster. And that lobster, that five pound and greater lobster produces more eggs than over 20 uh, pound and a half lobsters. So it's, it's really pretty important. Uh, mm -hmm. Parts of Canada follow this, but not all. And uh, it, it's a very important way that we maintain the uh, viability of our fisheries. And, and again, it's all based on stock safety, uh, as I like to call it, uh, which means that we're protecting the breeding population uh, for future uh, generations. So if we have a year class failure, for example, um, the next year, that, that uh, breeding population is there to come back. So I, I, I think the lobster fishermen in Canada and the US both buy into this uh, as a very important way of maintaining their fishery. And is this a good time to get into the byproduct stuff? Well, I'm gonna do it. Uh, one of the byproducts that we, we look at it at uh, throwaways from the lobster fishery that have value. And one of them is the blood of lobster. That's what I've got here. And uh, this blood uh, in lobster processing plants in Canada and the US typically have gone down the drain. And we have probably 3 million pounds of this material uh, as a waste product. And it's, it's gummy. Uh, here's some I just took out of a lobster and it's clotted already. Um, it's sort of like gelatin. And this material has both anti-cancer and antiviral properties. Um, let's see, we've got, we got those pictures. Um, and it also has some uh, properties related to um, uh, the, uh, some, some uh, skin lesions that we've, that we've seen in, uh, in, in people and in animals. Yeah, actually, let's, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, this is a, uh, these are pictures of a uh, uh, woman with eczema that uh, have been treated with an extract of, uh, of lobster blood from hemocyanin. And uh, this is a product that will be coming out actually momentarily, I think within the next few weeks, and from a uh, company called Dermaris. And uh, you can see the eczema uh, uh, in, in the uh, three uh, photographs top and, and left on the bottom and then before and after. But the other thing we, that we've discovered is this material, this lobster blood extract is antiviral. And uh, we know that it will um, effectively treat a herpes virus. We've tried this. Uh, we've got laboratory data to support this. Um, and we also have tried it on friends and family with things like shingles and it works. It works surprisingly well. We've also got a couple of patents that deal with this, uh, both in, in the US and, and, and Canada. And um, we're, we're on, on the fringe of getting this going. But th this, is, this is what the uh, lobster blood looks like. And again, we're throwing away two to three million pounds of this stuff that, that could have uh, quite a lot of value. And probably that's enough said ab about that. But we are hoping that it's never been tested on any coronavirus, including COVID-19, but it has the potential uh, to uh, deal with the coronavirus as a treatment. We, until we, we've actually tested it, we won't know. 
and Michael Ann, you can you can talk a little bit more about that in terms of what you've uh, kindly done uh, so that we can right. you know, move ahead with this. Yeah, so uh, just to give you an update from our last lobster masterclass, uh, since then we've started a, a GoFundMe page for Dr. Bob to get into a lab because there is a fee for him to get into a lab and he doesn't seem to be able to get a grant right now to do that. Uh, and it's not that much money. The last time, he, I think you told me Bob was $25,000. Uh, can you imagine right. um, a corporation just, you know, diving in or a few corporations just contributing to that? So. If any of you are from a corporation and you want to make a donation to Bob's testing, um, you know, this can either come from Canada or the U.S., obviously, uh, and he's open to testing in Canada. So I've been trying to get him connected with the National Research Center and some, just today, a cancer research doctor uh, in, in New Brunswick and really trying to get him into a lab so that he can do this kind of testing. We need a treatment for COVID as we know it. I don't even have to explain how important this is, uh, but this is where we're at with it. And if uh, any of you want to make a donation, some of you have already, and thank you so much. Every little bit that helps. Uh, Bob uh, wants to get into a lab to, and there's a fee to get into a COVID-19 testing lab to do that. So um, that's, I think this is fantastic, Bob, what, what you're doing. Uh, the other thing, thank you, Michael. you're welcome, you're welcome, that I wanted to mention about that cross-border industry, the importance of our cross-border industry is just to elaborate a little bit more on the new shell, the hard shell exchange is the reason the reason why Canada needs the new shell lobster from Maine is for their processing and New Brunswick leads the uh, you know Homeris Americanus processing plants in uh, you know they're the, they're the top and then Nova Scotia is a leader in dis distribution of Homeris Americanus and uh, the hard shell lobsters so and Maine needs the hard shell lobsters to fulfill their own quotas so this exchange back and forth has been going on for a very, very long time, and it's very healthy for both economies, and it's extremely important for us to support the lobster industry and, and, and keep it going. And, and put all politics aside, let's hope that they all can, you know, uh, send their lobsters out to the world so that everybody can taste uh, the beautiful Homeris Americanus that we have here in North America. So uh, we look forward to continuing doing these lobster master classes and we'll keep you day updated with what Bob's doing with his research. And certainly we would love to do these with, you know, some schools. Uh, Bob already uh, does these in, in Maine, conduct some of these classes in Maine. Uh, but together we can uh, all, you know, make a difference in supporting the lobster industry by uh, coming to a masterclass like this and passing it on to other people that you think would be very interested in and in learning more about their seafood, where their seafood comes from, the, the, the traceability, the footprint, and how sustainable this lobster fishery is and has been for a very long time. And I think we have some questions. Yes, I have a question, Bob, from Linda, who wants a little bit more information about the lobster blood treatment. She asked um, if it's been tested and approved for herpes and will it be by prescription or uh, over the counter? Well, it has not been uh, tested. It's informally, we have laboratory data that shows that we can kill a herpes virus. Um, and at the same time, we have tested this, I would say informally on friends and family. And I can show you pictures um, of people that we have uh, given it to and boy, does it work. But you might want to elaborate. So I think Linda, you're you're the lady that has emailed me and asked me about the cream. I think so. Uh, um, Ashley, have you had a chance to share that link and where as to where they can enlist, uh, put their email, uh, share their email, and then and be informed when that cream is available. The cream that Dr. Bob has been working on for uh, shingles and and eczema. Herpes. Yes. Yeah, we shared yes. the link yep. um, and also shared the fundraiser for the COVID-19 yep. research as well. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, yes. And Michael, and we, I think I have a question. It was either for you or for Paul. So Theo was asking um, what the websites were where, where people can order the lobsters from yep. that you had mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, Paul. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the website is newfoundlandlobsters.com. You can okay, uh, log on neat. there and yeah, quite easy. You can see the logo right behind uh, Michael Land there. And uh, yeah, you log on and follow the steps. It's, couldn't be easier. Yes. And they're hand, hand picked, just yeah. you know, overall best, best lobsters we can send you. And uh, yeah, they ship right to your door overnight. So it's uh, the process, very easy. Newfoundlandlobsters.com. Yeah, and if Sophia asked that question, uh, Sophia's already been spoiled by a seafood, uh, extravag seafood extravaganza here in Fire Island. Uh, we did an amazing seafood experience night, and um, and I'm sure she's going to be spoiled. Once if she orders those lobsters from Newfoundland, I will give you a personal uh, lobster 101, Sophia. <laughs> Great. And we don't have any more questions in the chat, except we did, Paul, have a couple of shout outs for your food truck. And apparently yeah. the cod bites are amazing. So I guess oh. if we're ever in Newfoundland, we have to yep. check that out. <laughs> yeah, we, we only uh, serve we only serve fresh cod, cod, cod you know, daily. So uh, uh, we keep keep it very simple, real light batter. And uh, well, thanks. For, thanks very much. Whoever yeah. shouted out to the cod bites. Well, <laughs> Paul, I want I want the recipe. <laughs> I, I would also you, I'll give it to you <laughs> if I could um, I, I noticed uh, Samuel Gorman who's a uh, veterinary student at Tufts uh, had signed on and I think your mom was on there too that, that's nice and a couple of people from uh, high school I wouldn't say I grew up there but uh, I noticed Bob Eisenberg and Laura Chazen and, uh, and Chris Murray but my brother-in-law had signed in uh, my friend and work associate, Greg Krug, uh, is in there. Mark Stern, uh, mentioned Stuart Lamont. Uh, oh, oh, Tom Quinn, by the way, I hope you noticed, Tom, I'm drinking Michigan beer. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I think that... Uh, I think Tom's had a that, few of those. Uh, covered, uh, of so uh, maybe yeah, good this stuff. is a question for Paul. Um, so we had a, a question if there are other lobster distributors within Canada that you could recommend. That was a question um, that someone other had asked. Other lobster distributors? Um, you need more, I need more information. You're talking about uh, direct to customer or uh, both? I don't know. We'll have to wait for <laughs> we'll have to wait for this person to specify. Um, yeah. While yeah. we're waiting, uh, Mike Glenn, uh, Mike asked if there's a link. Um, to the HPP machines that you mentioned. Maybe we could make sure we get that link to Mike. I don't know if you have that right now. Sure, off the top of my head, I want to say Shediac Lobster or Westmoreland Lobster or in Maine, Bob, I think there is, a, does Sea Trade have it now? Yes or not? Yeah, um, Sea Trade, Luke's Lobster. Uh, I mean, they're uh, probably the best way to go is uh, to the, uh, uh, Let's see what's Cisco, what's the, what's Cisco the has that product. If yeah. anyone's on here from Cisco, I think I'm pretty yeah. sure Cisco has that product. Yeah. I've seen it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great. And, and Mike, well, Lamb, we no? did. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Mike, Lamb, we had a couple of questions. I don't know if if um, someone misspoke or or if there's just a misunderstanding. But a couple of people wanted to confirm when you cook the lobster. Is it alive or is it dead before you cook it? It's a, it's alive when you. It's when you alive. Cook. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's alive. So uh, that's yeah. what I was talking about. When you cook lobster, if you're if you're dealing like when you go buy the lobster, I meant when you buy live lobster, it's kicking and it's well and it's all that kind of thing. You bring it home and then you keep it under the you know a, a damp cloth until you're going to cook it. Great. I'm not sure whether I did in the shout out connection whether I mentioned Justin Levitt, but I want to make sure he did. So Justin, okay. I'll be doing well. And yeah. Paul, we had another question for you. Do you ship your lobsters to the U.S.? Yeah, well, we uh, we got them down to Bob and Michael Land, so absolutely. <laughs> yeah, they came to me. Um, from the chat, apparently Stu Leonard's uh, a chain, a store chain in um, New York and New Jersey that kind of has a more yeah, farmers Stu market Leonard. type feel. Absolutely. Has great live and cooked live. Bagman's. Yeah. Stu Leonard's is good. Uh, Someone asked about um, if you could say anything about steaming the lobsters as opposed to boiling them. 
Sure. Steaming them takes a lot long, a little bit longer. Actually, double, probably almost all double the time. And Paul, you can confirm this with me. But um, a, 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 for about twelve minutes. Uh, yep. per, but you don't uh, have to eat as much water. Look at this. For the first pound. Uh, yeah. The, oh uh, wow. And then uh, about two to three minutes more per pound. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, all depends on the steamer. If you're using the commercial steamer, it's uh, it can be exactly. pretty quick as well. So all depends. Yeah. There's a lot a lot of different ways you can get steam. So yeah, yeah, and steaming is great. Steaming is really nice. I love the result on a steam. I usually boil mine though. I don't know why I, I always do that, but I just do it. Uh, but do you have a way? Do you have a preference of of, do, of cooking your lobster, Paul? Uh, well, like, like yourself, tradition, seawater. You know, it's just what I always knew. So, I mean, it's always nice to do different things. And I, sure. uh, I think I saw you not too long ago doing a ceviche. So that was pretty interesting. And, but uh, yeah. for me here in Newfoundland, we're surrounded by water. So surrounded by clean ocean water, I'll always go for the, for the bold in the ocean water. And I mean, the steam, yeah. steam works as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, okay. just go with what, uh, go with the traditional way. Right, right. So I think we can we can wrap it up now. I think we're yeah. Are we dropping off people? I, Ashley just let me know. Yeah, we're off. dropping off people, and I think the questions have slowed down. Um, so I have posted your email address, Michael Ann, as well as Bob's, um, and sent links to everybody in the chat. So they should okay. be able to reach out to you. Good night from Detroit. Yay, Detroit! And hey, let us know where you're from. <laughs> yes, we have someone from New Zealand with us. Yay! That so must be New Zealand, Royal Toronto. Um, oh. I think there was a Michigan, okay. yeah. a bunch of Canadians here, Maine. So yeah, we're we're officially. Ontario. I saw some Ontario friends here. There you go, Ontario. Yep. <laughs> That's why we love our cross-border people. Cross-border <laughs> lobster. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys all so much. Good. I appreciate you coming. Good. And, and we'll keep you, you posted. Oh. We'll keep Reach you posted out. on the next lobster class. It's going to be a winter lobster class and already brainstorming uh, what we're going to do for that. So I'll keep you posted on that. And keep supporting lobster industry, our cross border lobster industry. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Simon. Thank you. Good lobsters. Woo! <laughs>